Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists physicians with employment contract and independent contractor agreement issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, how a physician can renegotiate their contract. So, uh, if you have signed an employment agreement or an independent contractor agreement, uh, there's kind of three things that go into uh, I find kind of dictate when is a kind of natural point of renegotiation. So your contract will have some kind of term listed. So it's either going to be a fixed term, meaning one years or two years or three years. Uh, and then almost all of those have some kind of automatic renewal, usually one year. Uh, it could be an evergreen contract, meaning it just goes on forever until terminated by one of the parties. And then there also will be some kind of without cause termination, meaning either party can terminate the agreement at any time with a certain amount of notice to the other. Uh, most of the time it's 60 to 90 days in healthcare. So if you take those three things into account, how long is the term, what are the renewal periods, and how much notice do you have to give to get out of the contract, it can kind of give a natural break of, uh, of when you should renegotiate. So uh, let's just take, uh, as an example, you have a two-year contract with one-year auto renews and a 90-day without cause termination. Uh, almost no physician contracts have uh, built-in raises into them. There's no cost of living increases. The salary generally doesn't bump up year to year. Usually, you know, if you're in a three-year contract making 300000 you're going to make 300000 for all three years without any changes. Uh, so in this case, you have a two-year contract. An obvious window would be, you know, 90 days before the end of the two-year period. You would approach your um, director, boss, owner, whoever, uh, and that would be the time to try to renegotiate the terms uh, of the contract. Now, what can you re renegotiate? Well, you could renegotiate anything. Now, benefits and those types of things generally are not negotiable from an employer, meaning like if they don't offer health insurance, you're trying to negotiate that they do, that's not gonna happen. Maybe they'll give you a stipend or something like that. But I'm talking more of lines of you're making one amount and you wanna make more. Well, you need to be armed with statistics if you're gonna ask for more money. So you need to know what your productivity is. So if you are employed, with the hospital, uh, normally RVUs are the kind of, um, you know, data used to determine productivity for a physician. If you're in a private practice with a physician done group, normally they would use net collections, not RVUs. So you need to know if you are with a, you know, if you're in, a, in the, maybe like a IM specialty uh, physician practice who's owned by a, you know, a handful of physicians, you need to know what your net collections were for the last year. And then you need to compare that to MGMA data and you need to compare that to how much you actually made. And if you're you know, on the high percentile of productivity, but on the low percentile of compensation, then obviously you need to figure out what is the percentile compensation that matches what your productivity is and then go to the employer and, and ask to be <laughs> compensated at the amount that your production dictates. Um, now, if they say no, then you have a few options. So in this instance, when I said it was around 90 days before the end of the two, you know, initial two year term, uh, you can always just say, well, if you don't, you know, if we, if we can't work towards increasing my compensation, I'm, I'm going to give my 90 days notice. And sometimes and you have to actually be willing to go through with it. But many times they think you're just bluffing. And then if you call their bluff, they're, they're willing to move. Um, now, there will be employers where if you ask for more and they say no, uh, they mean it. <laughs> and they're not going to budge from that. And then it's up to you to kind of determine if that's, this is the place that you want to stay long term uh, if there aren't going to be increases. Now, uh, Many physician contracts will have a guaranteed minimum for a period of time and then convert to pure productivity. And there's, in those scenarios, it's very difficult to, to ask for more as far as compensation goes. The other stuff is the, the only way of getting changes. So 
let's just say you're you're paid on a pure RVU related contract, meaning every RVU that you earn, you get a certain, you know, it's called a compensation factor, and you just multiply your RVUs earned times the compensation factor, and that's how much you make in a year. And you, you could then uh, negotiate the amount of the compensation factor. So if you have a productivity, that would make sense. Now, if you're on net collections based agreement, let's say you're making 25% of the net collections of, you know, uh, whatever they've collected on your personally performed services, then you could try to negotiate the percentage of collections. That's another way of doing it. Um, and then we've already discussed the base. So uh, finding kind of whatever break it is at the end of the term uh, is a is a really natural point to renegotiate. Now, if it's an evergreen contract, um, I still would suggest the same thing. So before the end of the year, somewhere between two to three months before, uh, you know, the the calendar year, whatever you want to do, that would be the time to approach the employer and say, hey, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, changing my compensation structure in some way. Um, I find any reasonable employer is going to understand that. But if you can come to them with data, uh, it's much more effective than just saying, I feel I deserve you know, a bigger raise. Okay, well, what is that based on? And if, if your answer is, I just feel like it, th that's not a great position to be in. You need to say, well, the average uh, gastroenterologist in my specialty in this part of the country makes X, and I'm making well below that, but I'm at the 75th percentile productivity level in the MGMA compensation, and therefore I think I should, you know, my comp needs to be adjusted. That is much more effective negotiating than just saying, well, I just feel like I deserve more. So anyway, that's uh, how you negotiate a physician contract. If you have any questions about your employment agreement, or independent contractor agreement, feel free to contact me at the contact information listed below in the description, uh, or you can reach us through our website uh, listed below as well. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave those in the comments, uh, and I'll try to answer all of them. All right, thank you for watching the video. Take care.